There's one more person I would like to introduce, and that is Jack Bogle, who I talked about in the annual report. Jack Bogle has probably done more for the American investor than any man in the country. The truth is it was not in the interest of, invest, of the investment industry of Wall Street. It was not in their interest actually to have the development of an index fund, other than the index fund, because it brought down fees dramatically. So when Jack started, uh, very few people, certainly Wall Street did not applaud him. And he was the subject of some derision and a lot of attacks. I estimate that Jack, at a minimum, has saved, left in the pockets of investors. He's put tens and tens and tens of billions into their pockets. And those numbers are going to be hundreds and hundreds of billions over time. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Simply Finance. Today we will listen to Jack Bogle talk about the three most common mistakes every investor makes. For those of you who don't know Jack Bogle, he is the founder of Vanguard, which created and popularized index fund investing. Whether you use them or not, index funds are one of the most influential instruments for retail investors. Jack Bogle's low-cost index funds have made it possible for millions of investors to retire comfortably and will continue to do so for all retail investors in the future. In today's video, we are hearing from Bogle himself talk about mistakes he has noticed investors make the most often. So here's the first mistake. Well, of course, there are a thousand def uh, definitions <laughs> of investment and a, probably two thousand definitions of speculation. But the fundamental building block of that difference is investing is about owning corporations, businesses that actually exist, focusing on their intrinsic value, their ability to grow over the years through earnings, through paying out dividends, reinvesting the rest in the business, and holding corporations for the long run. That's where wealth is generated. It is not generated in the stock market. So when you have, let's call it, focusing on intrinsic long-term value as the definition of investment, speculation is betting on price and price is ephemeral, price is the price of a stock. Uh, it's anything but eternal. Uh, you're betting on price, you buy and sell with great frequency, while investing is a long-term uh, process, speculation is a short-term process. Sometimes it seems, Jim, getting shorter every single day. We now have some high-frequency traders out there who trade stocks every 15 seconds, but it may even be an average of 15 seconds. It may be trading in nanoseconds. Bam, bam, bam. That's speculation. It's not investing. I believe this distinction that Bogle just described is the most important today in the world of meme stocks and cryptocurrencies. A lot of new investors don't realize that when they buy a stock, they aren't just buying some random paper or random item in their Robinhood games. These stocks actually represent real companies that are doing business in the real world, selling products or services and generating profits for its shareholders. People need to realize this when buying a stock and make sure they are buying something that's going to grow in the future, because at the end of the day, investing is long term. If you are just buying and selling stocks and hoping to make quick profits based on some news, that's not investing. That's called speculation. And Bogle actually gives more thoughts on speculation. Let's listen together. Well, investing is about long-term wealth creation. Uh, speculation is a culture of trading with the other person, which we are another investor, uh, another institution. And we know, we know, Jim, that that is a loser's game. It has to be a loser's game, because if you bet A is going to go up, let's say Apple, and some, you're, you're selling it to someone who believes it's going to go down, uh, one of you are going to be right, one wrong. So the central fact of that trade is the man in the middle, the croupier, the broker, the money manager are all in the middle, and so it's not an even bet. It's a 50-50 it's bet until the cost of the croupiers is taken out. If, you, if it sounds like I'm talking about Las Vegas, I am. Uh, you know, you, we gamble back and forth trying to get other people's money, but the house always wins. If it sounds like I'm talking about the racetrack, I am. If it sounds like I'm talking about the state lottery, the worst, biggest, greediest croupier of them all, 
where <laughs> I take in, let's say, $100 million and maybe pay out to the winner $50 million, and the rest goes into the coffers of the state. Uh, so it, it, it obviously is totally unproductive. We all think that we are on the winning side, but since there are two people on every side, this is what people don't get about investing. Uh, it doesn't create value. It subtracts value, where speculation does. And investing adds value. Here, Bogle compares speculation to gambling. And just like gambling, there are winners and losers. Even though most people like to think that they are winners, a study shows that 90% of traders lose money. The worst part is, even when you do win in this game of speculation, you don't make up for your losses because the house always takes its cut. A lot of traditional brokers charge a trading fee, which can add up if you are buying and selling often. And before someone goes down and comments that Robinhood offers free trading, let me clarify that that's actually not true. Robinhood doesn't charge a commission, but that doesn't mean your trade is free. Robinhood actually sells your order flow to hedge funds like Citadel, who actually charge you more for securities you are buying, usually by only a few cents. But over time as you trade more and more and your order sizes increase, this small cost can add up fast. Uh, Wall Street is a mess. Our can I say it any more boldly? <laughs> Our financial system is a mess because it's all based on trading, heavily based on trading and speculation and not nearly heavily enough based on investment. Let me just give you an interesting example. Maybe a little bit unfair, but that's okay. Uh, the, the, the basic function, which everybody in Wall Street knows, which the regulators know, which people that love the system know and people that hate the system know, is the basic function, the classic function of our financial sector is direct to direct new capital to its highest and best and most profitable uses. New companies, existing companies with new ideas, who needs the capital will get it to the people that really need it the most and can do the most with it. So how much of that happens every year? Well, the answer to that is around $250 billion is directed into new initial public offerings and secondary public offerings of corporate stock, $250 billion. So that's the investment part of our system. How big is the speculative part? We trade, believe it or not, Jim, we trade $33 trillion with one another all year, gambling back and forth, every gamble creating a winner and a loser, and then that little croupier in the middle, whose little tiny bit of money turns out to be billions. And uh, so if you think about it that way, 250 billion versus 33 trillion, it's fair to say on that basis, and this is you know, many ways of measuring this, I admit, but on that basis it means that 99.2% of our financial situation, uh, system is dedicated to speculation and 8 tenths of 1% is dedicated to investment. Do the math, that's the number. As Bogle admits himself, the example he just gave isn't the best way of looking at the market, but again, it is not completely wrong and it does help prove a good point. The majority of the money in the market isn't really going into long-term investing and creating long-term value. Most of it is just being thrown back and forth through trading, which as we just discussed, isn't a winnable game for retail investors like me and you. That wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe.